Hi, and welcome to this episode of our tutorial series on the Advanced VR Framework version 3. In this episode, I want to explain a bit about the Select component. The Select component is an interact component that allows very simple type of interactions, normally by pressing the trigger, mouse button, or by, or by tapping. The Select interaction can be standalone or can be combined with all kinds of components. Here with me, I brought a few examples for this uh, select component. The hands have a special function which allows uh, uh, them to spawn a laser when they find a distance object to select with. And now using the select button, I can turn this light on and off. My next example is this button. The select component of this button is set to work with the drag component on the same button. The select component can also trigger other actors. So in this case, it is also set to trigger the lamp. So by pressing the trigger, I can turn the button on and we see that the lamp is also turning on. And if I turn the button off, you can see that the lamp is behaving accordingly. Here on the VAS, I also have the select component, and it is set to interact with the visual component on the same actor. So um, the hands also have the option to select using the pointing finger. So by extending that and pointing on the object itself, I can interact with the select component, which in turn interacts with the visual component, which then cycles through the different colors of the actor just by pointing and tapping on it. Be careful with this option though, because you may accidentally interact with elements that you didn't want to. So having the pointing finger option is not always the, the, the easiest or cleanest way to interact with. Lastly, the selection component can also open a selection menu, which allows you to set attributes on a little 3D menu, such as this. So I'll come over a bit because it always follows my face. And uh, we see that we have a few selection options here and the same uh, visual component that was set on the VAS is also set on this VAS and the selection menu can interact with that VAS and change the color, for example. Okay, that is all I wanted to say about the select component. Um, so let's take a look inside the, uh, the engine and see how it's set up there. So here inside the editor, if we go into the uh, map demo selection, we already can see a lot of um, selection examples that we can use. Um, so firstly, the selection button, for example, here, um, and selection menu here that can open several different objects, um, another selection menu here. And then we can see that this button has a selection menu, but this button op opens a window object. And here we can see that it doesn't open any any menu. It just opens. Uh, it just toggles our light directly. And here we can even see a group of actors having the same effect at the same time. Um, here we can see a combination with the drag component. I have to get a bit closer to interact so that select is triggering the drag component itself. Okay, during that, we will create our own new actor. So now let's create our own sample actor. I will create a new blueprint. That'll be an actor and I'll call that select cube. And going inside this cube, I will add a cube component. Make that parent so now we can see that we have our simple cube and i will simply select uh, uh, add a select component and now if we already place it in the world we could see that we can select it even though it doesn't do anything yet so now let's add some functionality to the cube um, here, if we select the select component, we can see that we have several different uh, selection options that we can choose from. 
So the most important one is the type. The type specifies which action should actually be done. So we have a lot of uh, components that can be can be set. So for example, all the time when the drag component was uh, set or was selected, it was having the drag option selected, or it can um, interact with the active component or the light component or the visual component, the open component, the trigger component. All of these are components. We also had a lot of examples of the selection menu, um, which we can simply add now. I will add a selection menu here, and then we can add a selection type. Um, we can also uh, define two different ways of according them. So maybe you saw that uh, one time the selection menu was made in, in rows and columns and one was in a circular arrangement. And we can add a few buttons to the selection menu. Each of, the, each of these buttons also needs to interact with the component. So if the actor doesn't have the ability, for example, to change its visuals or to activate because it doesn't have an activate component, the button simply will not do anything. But this is um, being done for a later time. I can simply add the buttons here. But these will uh, will not have a function unless you actually implement the component on it. Okay, so trying that out and having that set to the selection menu, we can press play again. And we can see that a selection menu is now spawned, and we can interact with these buttons, even though these buttons will not have an action, except for the delete. It, I don't think the delete necessarily needs an action. So let's say we don't want to use the selection menu. We want a different functionality be, to be added when uh, the button is, uh, the, the cube is being selected. The simplest one is also always custom. So if you press on custom, then you can uh, create a custom interaction for the for the cube itself. So what you can do is you can go in the event graph and you can add an event and you can set it to add select pressed. And now this is being called whenever the button is being pressed. And what, for example, we could do is just simply spawn a particle effect, um, spawn particle at location, um, get actor location. Um, I'm not really sure what kind of particles we have here. Let's let's see. We have the explosion explosion bomb. Let's take that. And now, if you press save and compile, the cube should now trigger the custom effect when we press on it. So now the cube explodes when you press. It. Okay, so um, just for a exa simple example, let's com uh, combine the cube with another uh, with another component. We will explain the functionality of each of these components in future videos. So I try not to make this too complicated, but just to see how the combination actually works. Um, we can add the listen to trigger component, for example. And the listen to trigger component basically has the same option as a, as a select component. It receives a trigger, and um, we can uh, we can recognize here when a trigger has been received. So I'm simply going to attach our particle effect to the listen to trigger component, and remove that. And notice now when we select our cube, it doesn't do anything anymore. And if we set the select component to be interacting with the trigger component, and the trigger component to be setting it to custom, so custom meaning a custom event being used on, on the component itself, then if you press on it, we will see the cube explode again. And um, now the additional functionality that we could have is, for example, if we want the select component to be triggering another actor, I can simply take a few other of these actors 
and I can set this select component to be um, not only triggering self, but to be triggering other actors. So for example, this one and the select component and this one. So now under actors to trigger, I will select the second cube and the third cube to be also um, be affected by this uh, select component. And now if I press on play and press the first cube, then we see that all of the cubes will explode. If I only press on this cube, only this cube will explode because we haven't set the select component on this cube to be also affecting the other. Components. Additionally, what you may have seen is if I select something, I'm able to, uh, it, it highlights when it tries to select it. Um, that's because of the highlight part here. Um, currently, our only working highlight part is the post process, but this will be one of our next agendas, uh, including uh, more, more of the highlight types. So we have more possibilities to um, be able to highlight an, uh, an, an actor or a mesh in uh, certain cool styles. Um, but we are also able to set the highlight color. So if I, for example, put this to red, this one stays at blue. And this one, for example, is green. If I go and highlight, go uh, with them, then maybe you can see the, the red light around it. Here's a blue light, and this is a green light. And um, uh, additionally, uh, you for, for the highlight component, you also can specify the select tag. So for example, if this, um, if this cube, let me show you that quickly on the cube itself. So if this cube, for example, had, would contain out of different meshes, let's, let's put a sphere on it. Makes that sphere a bit smaller. And now I would set the select component to be only interacting with components of these tags. For example, um, they should use the select component tag. That's one. So we know it's a very unique tag. If we save and compile that and we try to play, we see we cannot interact with it anymore. That's because our select uh, our selector has to be interacting with a select uh, select uh, with a component that carries a select tag, and um, if I put the select tag now, for example, on my sphere, I can put it on any number of components. Now, if we take a look at it. We see that we cannot interact with this actor while pressing on this button, but when we hover over the sphere, um, only the sphere um, turns uh, turns the highlight comp uh, uses the highlight, and um, the select only works on the sphere itself. It doesn't work on the on the cube anymore, but only on the sphere. Okay, so this is basically it from what I wanted to tell you about the select component. Um, it doesn't have that many options, but it's a very useful thing to, to quickly interact with objects and uh, to have all kinds of different players interact with it. Remember, this all, not only works for the non-VR pawn and the hands, this also works for the laser. Um, and both the, uh, the laser and uh, the hands usually use uh, the, the trigger to interact with the select component. But you can set it on uh, any kind of button. So remember when creating the pawn, let me quickly look for a pawn in here, the VR pawn. Um, so when setting on a pawn and you have the controller VR, then uh, we remember that we have used uh, the control presets. If we go in here and we can, um, we can define a button that uses the select functionality. So we could find, uh, for example, the phase one button to be able to save with something, not only the trigger. Okay, so this is absolutely everything. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you in the next one.